Guys, we need to talk, and I'm warning you right now that if you didn't like my tone in my April 9th review, you're not going to like it here. I'm going to be very accusatory here, because there's no way I can talk about this without so much vitriol and disgust. We're doing an internet video today, an animation put to a poem called Troll. It's five minutes, but to give it a proper review, I've had to do dozens of hours of research on the subject, and each story that I heard became more disgusting but less shocking. And I mean no exaggeration here. I now know that there is evil in the world. We're talking about trolls today, and we're not even talking about mine. This isn't about me. This is about a larger problem that needs to be acknowledged. This is a poem by Shane Kozan, and I know that poems in this day and age seem very passe, but I'll tell you right now that this guy is legit. Remember almost everything, right down to that first unbearable bee sting, when we learned that this tiny blue marble we call the world has rules. Rule number one, don't fuck with the bees. I believe that he's the greatest poet currently alive, and maybe one of the greatest who ever lived. His other notable works are The Crickets Have Arthritis and To This Day, and each of them are beautiful. The former is about the narrator getting to know a dying boy in the hospital. He says the worst part about being sick is that you get all the free ice cream you ask for. And he says the worst part about that is realizing that there's nothing more they can do for you. He says ice cream can't make everything okay. And the latter is about the effects of bullying. The second one is truly amazing. He tried to kill himself in grade 10 when a kid who could still go home to mom and dad had the audacity to tell him, get over it. As if depression is something that can be remedied by any of the contents found in a first aid kit. But this particular poem came about because to this day didn't deal with the online aspect of bullying, because Shane didn't grow up with that type of bullying. So he did some research and dedicated another poem to it. And to those who are saying there's a difference between cyberbullying and trolling, shut the fuck up. That's a part of the problem. You want to know the difference? I'll tell you the difference right now, but you might not like the answer. In most cases, it's the difference between a person experiencing their first high and an addict. Ah yes, the slippery slope fallacy. Okay. Let's put it this way. Cyber bullies will inevitably call themselves trolls. And here's the real kicker. The benign trolls will defend the actions of the cyber bullies as mere trolling. The line between trolling and bullying is thin and semantic. Is every troll like this? No. But the ones who aren't are people who want assault to be legal because they like flicking other people in the back of the neck. The poem starts by describing trolls from mythology, with a little bit about how they act today. Once upon a time, you and all your kind lived underneath bridges, had ridges for ribs that dropped off into empty chests as if your hearts were all stolen treasures, as if an excavation crew were hired to dig up and remove the part of you that let you feel. These are described as monsters. They feed off of negative emotions. You had an endlessly flowing supply line of food. You began to brood over humanity and made meals of our hope. As if crushing our spirits would make your mirrors cast better reflections than the ones they gave. As if the only way you could save yourselves was to make the world ugly so no one would notice you hiding in it. They use the pain of others. They abuse beautiful things like hope. It ends the first part by saying that they once upon a time didn't exist. And now, they do. And then one day, the world changed. But you all stayed the same just migrated from living underneath bridges to living underneath information superhighways. Now we're talking about modern trolls, and they're even worse than the trolls of yore. Each already deep in chest became an abyss that no one would ever find the bottom of. Concepts like love fell into your gravity. And it says the sad truth, since this is a new problem, no one really knows how to deal with it. We turned ourselves into life preservers, hoping to save as many as we could. But the fathers who stood guarding closet doors, and the mothers who secured the floors underneath beds, all shook their heads, not knowing how to deal with you. And before you say that something on the internet deserves to be trolled, that's like saying that a statue deserves to get vandalized because you put it outside. Yes, it's more likely, but it shouldn't happen. It only happens because people are dicks. You began to begin uploading yourselves into our homes. You had computer screens for eyes and software for bones. Like the trolls who built viruses that could hack into webcams. You turned your hate into stones and hurled them at beauty as if you couldn't bear to see anything other than ugly, anything different. This is one of the stronger lines of the poem. I mean, let's start with the obvious. The trolls photoshopping people and things they didn't like into porn because they thought it was funny. 
It was funny until that poor girl's parents found it, before her school found it, and before she committed suicide because she couldn't take the harassment. And the knee-jerk reaction is that if people couldn't take this kind of harassment, they shouldn't have been on the internet. Y you know there was a man who burned to death, but he probably shouldn't have been less flammable. You see, that excuse only works until you realize that you're talking about a human. And humans have limits, not only physical, but mental and emotional as well. And no, one insult isn't going to do anything. Just like one drop of rain won't do anything, or one spark won't do anything. But the storm can crush even the strongest spirit. And you know what the really sad thing is? Some of the trolls hearing this are smiling right now. Different. You had fingernails like flint and scraped them along decency, hoping we would be the ones to all catch fire. A clever way to describe something as seemingly as innocuous as starting a flame war for no particular reason. It's funny, really. That kind of chaos was once thought to only be capable by mythological gods, easily disrupting order just for shits and giggles. You all had smiles like one-way barbed wire, not meant to keep us out, meant to keep us in. And admittedly, this is the one line of the poem that I don't really understand. Maybe it's the mocking smile that people who write Don't Feed the Trolls have. At this point, not feeding the trolls is like ignoring a bully. Surrounded by people who used to say that rhyme about sticks and stones. As if broken bones hurt more than the names we got called, and we got called them all. So we grew up believing no one would ever fall in love with us. That we'd be lonely forever, that we'd never meet someone to make us feel like the sun was something they built for us in their tool shed. A method that only inevitably exasperates the problem. Voice like a firing pin, you spoke in explosions. People used to only threaten other people with rape or death or whatever when they were deranged. Anonymity is like alcohol. It doesn't make you do anything that you didn't have the desire to do. It only removes the inhibitions. It isn't cute. The only one who would ever find trolling funny is the troll who did it. Anyone else who finds fun from your sadistic behavior is just an asshole. Do you think that trolling is just leaving spam in the comment box? No. Trolls will do incredibly heinous things. Let's start with doxing. If someone doesn't like you, they'll find out your real name, your real address, your domestic address, your IP address, and your social security number as well. Also, let's post a call of action in a forum that this person here has been drowning puppies. But maybe the internet vigilantes aren't working fast enough. Swatting is when they call it when trolls call 911 on you. It happens so frequently that yes, they have a term for it. I'm surprised that no one's been killed by it yet. You've talked strangers into death and laughed. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. When someone disliked on the internet has finally committed suicide, there's nothing but celebration as the trolls dance on their proverbial grave. I cannot personally imagine what it would be like to be famous specifically for doing something bad. Hell, the Star Wars kid that you all laughed at had to relocate due to the trolling and harassment. And I will remind you that he was filmed and the video was put on the internet without his consent. And as each family learns to graft skin over the wounds you gave them, you hem yourselves into the scar. After someone has committed suicide due to any kind of bullying, really, it seems to be a tradition for the bullies to reach out to the families to mock them further. You have coaxed the sober back into bars, handed out cigars at memorials, offered nooses, cliffs, and pills to those who unfortunately found you before they found help. I've seen this kind of stuff with my own eyes. Whether it be random people posting bullshit on Facebook memorials about how they're happy whoever is gone, or a fucked up individual making websites designed to mislead people into making irreversible life choices. The goal of trolling is essentially to steal enjoyment out of another person. Even the most benign forms of trolling, that is the essence, and the only joy you can get out of it is a kind of naughty glee. You have praised suffering waltzed in between tragedies, gracefully dipping misery as if we would somehow be impressed with the dexterity of your animosity. Just watch Cute Fuzzy Weasel's reviews of Measy Murderface or James the Preacher if you want evidence of that. Whether they're saying things just to piss people off, or they're really just fucked up individuals, does it really matter? Does the world need that kind of filth? You have cheered on. Great. Oh, I've heard the stories. They aren't pretty. And even if you assume that every single one of them is false, the fact that that's a go-to threat for trolls is just disgusting. Dashed through police tape as if it were the finish line in a race of who can be awful first. That line is incredibly poignant. Even now, you somehow see this as an invitation to turn your keyboards into catapults, wondering which one of you can be the first to hate this best. 
I know that this video is going to attract trolls, and I want to tell you a story. I scrolled through the comments of this video on YouTube, and I blocked everyone who had the there's a difference between cyberbullying and trolls mentality. The people who ignored the damage that they're enabling. That mentality is toxic, and it will not be tolerated on my watch. It shouldn't be tolerated anywhere. I said it before, the difference is semantic, and with each bully who hides behind this bullshit mentality, the excuse gets thinner and thinner. It brings me back to this point. The people who are saying that there's a difference between cyberbullying and trolling just so they can keep trolling are pretty much saying that we should keep assault legal because they like to flick people in the back of the neck. Your loathing, already dressed in riot gear, ready to incite rage, as if each message board is a stage where you recite hostility, turning freedom of speech into freedom of cruelty. That is my favorite line of the poem. These people will defend their actions under freedom of speech as they stalk and harass someone, send them things like vibrators in their P.O. box, all to stifle the opinion of someone that they don't like. We are stuck with you. The same way you are stuck with you. Your mind is glue and it keeps malice fastened there like cheap wallpaper. Causing someone to commit suicide is murder, directly or indirectly. It's easy to dehumanize your victim on the internet. They're just words on the other side of a screen, or in my case, a voice. The people who cause this kind of harassment to anyone are truly disgusting. And the people who look past this just to keep their own stupid and sick habits aren't far behind. In politics, they're called useful idiots. Usually, they're used to carry out extremist ideology by radicals. These useful idiots are being used to naturalize and celebrate cruelty. We were once upon a time told that none of you exist. We dismissed you as make-believe or myth now, armed only with resolve. We can no longer afford to tell ourselves that you aren't real. We will not let you make your dinners out of the things we feel. Blocking a troll only gets rid of the people wasting their time trying to waste other people's time. It doesn't stop the real problems. You can banish this filth to anywhere, to the dark net, and it still won't die. This behavior has made me feel sorrow and sympathy for people I don't agree with on any points. People I personally don't even like. People that I'd never want to meet in my life. The don't feed the trolls philosophy is part of the bystander effect. If you ignore the problem, it just might go away. It's not. And as our lives become more entwined with the internet each and every year, the problem is going to get worse and affect more and more people. Imagine you, 10 years down the road, being unable to get any jobs because some trolls didn't like your opinion and began to run a hate blog that operates half a decade after you've given up. So, what can be done about it? Stop tolerating it on any level. The simplest form of trolling is on the same enjoyment level of flicking a spitball at someone, something that only junior high schoolers can enjoy. It's time to grow up. This is the adult world. Check your own behavior and conduct yourself in a respectable manner. Or keep defending these acts under freedom of speech and keep giving the governments the ammo they need to whittle it away. This mentality will not be tolerated here. These people, this is one of the worst mentalities I have ever seen in my life. One of the most destructive mentalities that I've ever seen in my life. This isn't about limiting an art. This is about willingly hurting other people because you think it's funny. Willingly looking past the harm towards other human beings. People with lives and families. Just because you think it's funny or you think that they deserve it or whatever. No one deserves the shit that I've seen. No one does. Guys, we need to talk, and I'm warning you right now that if you didn't like my tone in my April 9th review, you're not going to like it here. I'm going to be very accusatory here, because there's no way I can talk about this without so much vitriol and disgust. We're doing an internet video today, an animation put to a poem called Troll. It's five minutes, but to give it a proper review, I've had to do dozens of hours of research on the subject, and each story that I heard became more disgusting but less shocking. And I mean no exaggeration here. I now know that there is evil in the world. We're talking about trolls today, and we're not even talking about mine. This isn't about me. This is about a larger problem that needs to be acknowledged. This is a poem by Shane Kozan, and I know that poems in this day and age seem very passe, but I'll tell you right now that this guy is legit. 
Remember almost everything, right down to that first unbearable bee sting, when we learned that this tiny blue marble we call the world has rules. Rule number one, don't fuck with the bees. I believe that he's the greatest poet currently alive, and maybe one of the greatest who ever lived. His other notable works are The Crickets Have Arthritis and To This Day, and each of them are beautiful. The former is about the narrator getting to know a dying boy in the hospital. He says the worst part about being sick is that you get all the free ice cream you ask for. And he says the worst part about that is realizing that there's nothing more they can do for you. He says ice cream can't make everything okay. And the latter is about the effects of bullying. The second one is truly amazing. He tried to kill himself in grade 10 when a kid who could still go home to mom and dad had the audacity to tell him, get over it. As if depression is something that can be remedied by any of the contents found in a first aid kit. But this particular poem came about because to this day didn't deal with the online aspect of bullying. Because Shane didn't grow up with that type of bullying. So he did some research and dedicated another poem to it. And to those who are saying there's a difference between cyberbullying and trolling, shut the fuck up. That's a part of the problem. You want to know the difference? I'll tell you the difference right now. But you might not like the answer. In most cases, it's the difference between a person experiencing their first high and an addict. Ah yes, the slippery slope fallacy. Okay, let's put it this way. Cyber bullies will inevitably call themselves trolls. And here's the real kicker. The benign trolls will defend the actions of the cyber bullies as mere trolling. The line between trolling and bullying is thin and semantic. Is every troll like this? No. But the ones who aren't are people who want assault to be legal because they like flicking other people in the back of the neck. The poem starts by describing trolls from mythology, with a little bit about how they act today. Once upon a time, all your kind lived underneath bridges, had ridges for ribs that dropped off into empty chests as if your hearts were all stolen treasures, as if an excavation crew were hired to dig up and remove the part of you that let you feel. These are described as monsters. They feed off of negative emotions. You had an endlessly flowing supply line of food. You began to brood over humanity and made meals of our hope. As if crushing our spirits would make your mirrors cast better reflections than the ones they gave. As if the only way you could save yourselves was to make the world ugly so no one would notice you hiding in it. They use the pain of others. They abuse beautiful things like hope. It ends the first part by saying that they once upon a time didn't exist. And now, they do. And then one day, the world changed. But you all stayed the same just migrated from living underneath bridges to living underneath information superhighways. Now we're talking about modern trolls, and they're even worse than the trolls of yore. Each already deep in chest became an abyss that no one would ever find the bottom of. Concepts like love fell into your gravity. And it says the sad truth, since this is a new problem, no one really knows how to deal with it. We turned ourselves into life preservers, hoping to save as many as we could, but the fathers who stood guarding closet doors... 